Hello and welcome to the 10th and final video in our series on labor market frictions. In this video, we're going to look at some comparative static exercises for our model. There are more exercises in the slides, but I'm going to focus only on the first two. So the first one is a change, in this case, an increase in unemployment benefits or unemployment income. We can work through it in words and then see how graphically all this comes together. So first, as unemployment benefits, they are going to affect the surplus of a match. Remember that the total surplus of the match, Z minus B, is going to be now reduced because of the higher benefits. This basically happens because the opportunity cost of workers is higher. They have more income even if there is no match. Now, as you reduce this match, that's in fact going to increase the wage. And so this higher wage is going to have an important effect on firms because now posting vacancies is less attractive. Evidently, there's going to be less profits if the firm gets to hire. And so labor tightness has to fall. Now, because labor tightness is falling, then there is going to be two effects of consumers. The labor tightness effect is going to mean that PC is going to go down. The probability of finding a job is going to go down. But we know that wages are now higher. And so searching for work becomes more attractive as the wage and the unemployment benefits are both higher now. So on the one hand, workers want to participate more because participation now has a higher value. But getting a job, it's going to be harder because the price, sorry, the probability of finding a job, it's going to be lower. And so we actually don't know what's going to happen in equilibrium to Q. And we're going to have to see these two effects going one after another. But because we know for certain what's happening to tightness, we can know for certain what's going to happen to unemployment and to the vacancy rate. Unemployment rate has to raise and has to, has to increase, and the vacancy rate has to fall. Uh, graphically, this is what's happening. For a given tightness, there is no change in the function PF. The function is the same. Now, what's happening, though, is that as the surplus of the match is going to be lower, then K over that surplus is going to go up. That's going to reduce the tightness from J1 all the way down to J2. Now, at the initial value, that's going to be this lower line here. At the initial value, J1, just the decrease in J2 will have decreased Q. But we have a secondary effect that's going to increase B. Okay, so as B is increasing, the whole curve is going to shift up because now the value of a of participating is going to be higher for any value of j. But because j is going down, we actually don't know what's going to happen. In the picture, q is going down, which is actually the most likely thing to happen. But in practice, q could have gone up. The reason is that we don't know if this curve is going up by more than what J is decreasing. That's going to be the key here to know what the net effect is. The second change we want to cover is a change, in this case, an increase in productivity. And this is kind of the other side of the surplus of the match. Now, when we increase B a moment ago, we decrease the total surplus. Now, when we're increasing productivity, we're actually increasing total surplus. Now, the same as before, wages are going to go up but now because of a different reason. And so the effect is going to actually be different because even though wages are going up, the surplus that firms get, their profits are going to be higher than they were before. And so as the profit is higher, firms want to pose more vacancies and tightness is actually going to increase. And so the effect on consumer is going to be that they have higher wages and a higher probability of finding a job because of the higher tightness. And so both of these changes are going to actually increase participation. So we know that Q is going to increase unambiguously. 
On the part of the other variables, we know that unemployment has to fall because of the change in tightness. The vacancy rate has to go up because of the change in tightness. And output is going to have to go up because you both have more participation, a higher probability of finding a job, and higher productivity. So the three components of output are going to go up. Now, to finish this up, if we look at, it, at this graphically, what we have is the following. As we increase, increase Z, we increase the match surplus. That's going to make that this value goes down. As this value goes down, you're going to move along the curve to a J2. As you move along the curve, you will have increased participation even if nothing else had happened, just because the probability of finding a job is higher. But not only that probability is higher, Z is going from Z1 to Z2. So the way she's going to be higher. And so that's going to increase participation for any tightness. But because tightness is also higher, that's going to further increase participation. This is the sense in which Q is definitely going to go up. So I hope these two examples show you how you can use the model to do counterfactuals in thinking what will happen if one of the variables of the model changes. There are other examples in the remaining slides that I invite you to go over, like a change in matching efficiency, a change in hiring cost, and a change in bargaining power. Uh, with these, uh, we are done for this uh, module. I hope you come to me with your questions and I hope you've enjoyed these videos.